this proposal forward or not. So anybody ready to move this question? So so I, I have a practical question. Uh, who, who are the, the members of the Business Development Committee? Uh, let's see, David, Michael, Ken, Jeremy, Greg, and Jerry, and Shabon, I believe. Andy, do you recognize yourself as a member of the Business Development Committee or not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tend, I, that's a great question. I don't know. So, I, I'm anyway, probably not really. So, I have a, yeah. a motion from somebody on the development. I move, I move that we recommend to the governing board to uh, move this uh, proposal to the Public Service Department. Second. Discussion? I think that the proposal is incomplete. That you're representing to use approximately 30% of towers that we don't have the rights to. So I would second it, I would support it if it's modified to say well, yes. you know, we anticipate being able to negotiate for these. Yeah, I think it's pleasant. Jeremy? So just to reiterate what I said before, I just I think I think the risk is too high. Okay. Any other comment? All right, let's take a vote. All those in favor oh, of oh. the motion? Well, I hey, what Henry, are your friendly men uh, for, oh sorry henry henry down there okay henry you're muted you're henry mute. just a quickie um so is this thursday which is the third round of of funding is that the last round of funding or what i mean so i mean yep. you have this deadline what is there going to be another round and or is this nope. it? and That's so Okay. Any other? I think we should. Uh, uh, would it be okay to amend the uh, motion to say that we will revise and discuss with, you know, I, I don't know how to work that out without the collusion thing, but to, you know, make sure that it's. I, yeah, I think okay we can write Michael. in our proposal. Okay, go ahead, Michael. Um, as the motion is now, I would have to vote no. If if the motion is amended to say that we recommend to the board that we pursue this proposal further and um, give a certain body the decision-making power of whether to submit it on Thursday at 4.30 so that there's some time to discuss a variety of aspects including the one greg raised and others um then maybe i could support it but as it stands now i, I would not support this proposal i think there's too much i mean leaving the possible threat to my own company out of it which is possible you know it, it, it's real um there's a lot of, we're basically saying we're going to spin up a new wisp in a couple of months and run it and compete with everyone else in the marketplace. And I don't see that as a practical plan. If, however, something can be worked out with other providers and doesn't have to be Cloud Alliance, other providers, maybe this is a viable thing. But as it stands now, I can't support it. I think we need to get the proposal in so that we can figure that out if it's something that's viable or not. That's kind of my feeling, but. Okay. The department's going to ask that very question. How are you going to do it? And we don't, have, it's not in the proposal. It's got, Fair it's got to be modified. All right. Any more questions? Not questions, comments. All right. Let's take a vote. All those in favor of the motion as amended. Right. What is the amendment? No, there was no can amendment. I, can I hear the motion no. as a yeah? No amendment. Okay, right. so what's the motion? The proposal to submit the proposal submit as the is. With. Yeah, that's the motion. That, okay. Yeah, that's the motion before the body right now. Yeah. I'm not going to make the amendment. It's probably and, inappropriate right, for yeah. me to be the one to amend it. Point. Point of order: If if the, if we're not doing it unanimously, that ha it has to be done with a roll call. Yep. 
That's still a roll call vote. But I guess we just should ask the question, do, does someone want to pose a specific amendment? Well, I mean, I thought I sort of did um, that, you know, we amend the motion to um, to say that, you know, we'll work out the kinks. I don't know exactly how to word it, but. Yeah, because I, 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 I think that. I would need to understand the parts that need to be modified in order for it to be more acceptable. I mean, I understand, and, and I, I didn't read it in detail, um, but I understand that there is a, there, that, and, I, and I remember pieces in there that there are many steps that need to happen that haven't happened yet. And I even thought the relationship with Cloud Alliance and with Detail was described in there as something that needs to be developed more fully. Right. That's, what I, that's what I thought I remember seeing. I'm pretty sure it's in there. So and maybe I get a chance to see it. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, and, and I guess I could I would accept a a, a broad amendment, recognizing that very few of us have had a chance to read it. That there may be some need to modify the proposal to be more clear about um, activities that are necessary for for this proposal to move forward. You know, something like that. I, I, I can understand that because again, very few of us have had a chance to read it in detail. So, so, and I, and I think that is also the intent is to make sure that by Thursday it is a better product. Um, so, and, and, and I, yeah, maybe the amendment is that on Thursday, uh, either the business development committee or a subset of the business development committee makes the final decision that the product has been refined enough to address at least some of the concerns and a significant amount of concern. Um, that it is a more complete proposal, recognizing it'll never be a complete proposal. Um, so that's a that's a vague motion, a vague acceptance of a an amendment. Is that a second there? <laughs> we... I can I can second that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, who's on the, the, who's the body? Who is the body that's going to decide on Thursday? I'll participate. The, there's a project team which I right. happen to be a member of, but obviously was not kept in the loop. So I don't know if I should step, stay out of it, but I, something like a project team could take that role. Okay. Yeah. Who, who was the project team? I mean, the other thing is that we're just recommending to the board, you know, this, this is also gonna come up in discussion in the regular meeting as well, so. You got three minutes. minutes. Yeah, and we want to. I, I'm going to. I want to move this along. So, was there a second on that amendment? Yes, I seconded. Okay, so, I seconded but, what Ken proposed. Yeah. Okay. Then the amendment was to have a, go through again in terms of the proposal, so it reflects more of what we need to get clear about in terms of who is doing what. And I think the document already is, says this, but we should make sure. And. Um, We'll move this amend move this amendment, and then we can have a vote on the proposal itself, so we can recommend the one way or the other. So let's have a vote, roll call vote, on the amendment. Michael, you going to vote? I'm going to abstain. Okay, Ken. Yes. Jeremy. Hanson. No. Jeremy Matt? Yes. Uh, Greg Kelly? Yes. Siobhan? No. Uh, Jerry? No. David, yes. So we got one, two, three, four, four yeses, one, two, one, two, three, no's. So the yeses have it four to four to three. So the that was, so on, that's the that amendment. was on the amendment. That was on the amendment. Let's have a vote on the proposed uh, proposal with as amended. All those in favor going around the table again. Michael. No. Jeremy. Which Jeremy? Oh, Hanson. No. Uh, so you're not going to submit, okay. Uh, Jeremy, Matt? Yes. 
Uh, Ken? Yes. Greg? Yes. Uh, who am I missing? Siobhan? No. No, okay. Um, Jerry? Jerry? No. David, yes. So one, two, four, four yeses, and one, two, three, four noes. So it fails. Yes. All right. Um, yes. I'm going to not adjourn the business development meeting, and we'll meet after the regular meeting because I want to go through those resumes and move on some hiring somebody. So I have a motion to adjourn so we can start the other meeting. So, so let's so so that we don't run afoul of parliamentary procedure and having to rewarn the meeting. I move well, that we re that we recess the business development committee meeting to the to happen after the regular governing board meeting. Yep. Second. Isn't fair. Aye. 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 Thanks. Quick question: Can can the proposal that did not pass now be brought up? to the board yeah but we don't recommend it no there's no, yeah. Neutral. Yeah. no, there's no recommendation right right I, I think that would probably be appropriate yeah yeah we, yeah, okay. we can discuss the maybe maybe the board will come up with something right yeah. well and there's there's a lot more people to vote and there's a lot more um there's a kind of a broader discussion that can be had Okay, so um, I see 601 um, and I see a quorum of the uh, CV Fiber Governing Board. So I will call the meeting to order. Uh, our recording is already, is already started. Um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, if this thing comes under the grant project update, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I think that's probably the, that was the logical place that I, I thought it was going to live. Okay. That's it. Okay. Um, so, uh, public comment. Does anybody have any comments on items that are not on the agenda that they would like to discuss? Okay. Hearing none. Um, so, let's Jeremy, move on. Yep. Oh, just, uh, just one uh, item. Um, which is uh, communications committee member addition. Okay, so let's um, let's put that at uh, let's put that towards the end. Will you uh, will you r remind me of that, Chuck? I will. I don't have my usual computer set up, so I don't have my dual monitors and lots of notes everywhere. So a bit more challenging today. Okay, so we will add a discussion of adding someone to the communications committee. Um, uh, the next item is Duxbury and Washington appointees uh, introductions. So we have two um, two new members of our um, of our governing board. We have uh, we had John Guifre step down from Duxbury, and we now have uh, Tim Sullivan. He's here with us today. Thanks for joining us, Tim. I clarify. Roxbury. Uh, oh, what, what, what I, did I say Duxbury? Yes. Oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Roxbury, okay. Duxbury, they sound all so the same, so, so close together. So Roxbury, yes, of course. Guys, Duxbury doesn't have the marble, come on. <laughs> oh, there you go. And I, and I screwed it up on the agenda too, so my apologies for that, everyone from Roxbury, or Duxbury for that matter. Um, and we also have another appointee from uh, Washington. We have uh, Katerina, Katerina Mack. Um, she's uh, the Washington appointee to CV Fiber. There is a, a Washington appointee to EC Fiber as well. Because as you recall, Washington joined both. So uh, welcome, Katerina. Thank you. Hello. So um, I think it would be worthwhile. We have uh, five minutes in the agenda, and we have some extra time. Um, if we maybe all went around and introduced ourselves, um, so uh, your name, your town, um, and we'll continue from there. And Tim and Katharina, once you, when you have a, uh, when I call you, if you want to mention anything that you want to mention that might help us uh, kind of put you in perspective. 
Um, let's see, I'm just going to go in order of my, let's see, on the participants list. Let's start with uh, Alan Gilbert. You're on mute, Alan. There you go. And Sorry. muted again. <laughs> Am I muted now? Can you hear me? No, you're good. You're good. Okay. I'm Alan Gilbert. I'm the delegate from Worcester. Andy Gilbert. Yeah, Andy Gilbert, delegate from Cabot. Chuck. Chuck Burt, delegate from Moortown. Uh, David Healy. If I could turn the right button on. <laughs> delegate from <laughs> delegate from Callis. Um, David Went. Uh, hi everyone. I'm the alternate delegate for Duxbury. Thanks, David. Uh, Greg. Greg Kelly, the delegate for Barry City. Henry? Henry Amistadi, delegate for Duxbury. Jeremy? Uh, Jeremy Matt, I'm the alternate for Plainfield, and I'm also the clerk. Uh, I'm Jeremy Hansen. I'm the delegate from Berlin and the chair. Uh, Jerry? Jerry Diamantides, alternate from Berlin, and I am not on the internet uh, aspect of this, just on the phone. Uh, John Morris. John Morris, I'm the delegate. Okay, John Russell. So, uh, John, you're you're muted. John is the alternate from Worcester. Um, and we're to you, Katerina. Um, yeah, as mentioned earlier, Washington delegate, new to the group. Um, thank you for the welcome. And um, my internet has been going in and out, so I may drop off the video when it does. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Okay, uh, Ken? Yeah, I'm Ken Jones. I'm the delegate from Montpelier. Michael? Michael Birnbaum, uh, delegate from Plainfield. Welcome to you too, new ones. Uh, Siobhan? Uh, Siobhan Paracone, delegate from Orange. Phil? Phil Hayek, delegate from Middlesex and vice chair of the board. Ray? Ray Pelletier, delegate from Northfield. All right, Tim? Tim Sullivan, representing Roxbury. Um, I had uh, been in contact with you, Jeremy, way back in 2017, 18, about this whole project. And I wished to be on the uh, on this board back then, but uh, um, I wasn't allowed or something back then, not by you guys, but uh, by my own town, I think. Uh, but uh, I've convinced them recently, so I'm on. Um, I have a background in IT and tech and creative spaces. I'm a musician as well, and I'm glad to be part of this. Welcome, Tim. Uh, Tom? Uh, delegate for East Montpelier. All right. Well, um, echoing what uh, a lot of folks said, uh, welcome to Tim and Katerina. Um, we're glad to have you on board, and hopefully with your help, we can keep uh, keep driving this forward. Um, so I'm experimenting with uh, the consent agenda like we had talked about in a previous meeting. So we've got these three items. Um, the invoice from Fred Goldstein, um, which was part of the contract. The, uh, some remote meeting software purchases. This is going to be uh, either uh, GoToMeeting or Zoom uh, specifically purchased for CV Fiber with two accounts. So one of those would be for me and I was thinking uh, David Healy would have the other one so he could run the other meeting. Or if we decide that we need more later, we can we can add more. Um, and then uh, the approval of the July 14th meeting minutes, a lot of the feedback for that happens over email anyways. So um, without further ado, I'm going to move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Okay, I heard a second from Chuck. Any further discussion? 
Uh, the only thing I would throw in here is not Zoom. <laughs> okay. So you, it just performance you, is even worse than GoToMeeting, believe it or not. So, okay. so, so you, you like this better, Andy? Yeah, GoToMeeting performs much better than Zoom. So. Okay. Uh, Ray? Uh, just one question. That has to do with Fred's invoice. Is, is payment of this invoice like the final payment for the work such that what it indicates is that we have accepted his uh, his work product? It would suggest that, yes. Any other questions? I mean, we can also we can also you know, break this out if it's if there's not unanimous consent on on any of these, then we can break this out and we can discuss it more. Uh, I see Michael. Um, following up on Ray's question, um, has the Department of Public Service? accepted our business plan as submitted i've not heard that back from them yet no then is it isn't the final payment to interrail predicated on that of course okay so 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 the the board is authorizing that should the um you know should dps write us the check because if they don't write us the check we don't write fred the check i mean that's that's how this worked previously. Okay, as long as, as long as we're not pledging the check in this meeting without knowing that we're gonna get the funds. Um, well, the, um, the, okay. the way the contract's written is that he doesn't get paid unless his work products get approved. Okay. So I'm, okay. I'm, I'm totally comfortable with, with that anyways. Okay. Um, all right, so not hearing anything else. Um, I'm gonna assume that we have a consensus unless somebody shouts out that they want to, um, that they want a roll call vote on this. Okay, it appears we have consensus, so the motion passes. Uh, moving on to uh, appointment of treasurer. So it is with great joy that I would like to introduce you to Lee Youngman, who we have in the meeting here with us. Um, <laughs> Lee has agreed to Thank serve you. as our treasurer um, and has a background in um, being a treasurer and uh, bookkeeping and uh, wants to see us succeed. So Lee, I'll let you introduce yourself. Okay, hi everybody. Um, I'm also really have been interested in this group since it was a fledgling group, but um, but had conflicts as well. So I have been in a sort of finance world for my entire career. I was a banker for 22 years. I'm a small business owner. I'm the treasurer for the town of Orange. I have kept the books for my store since 2008. Um, it doesn't mean I know everything, and I'm sure there's way more that I don't know than that I do. But um, but I am a fast learner and. I kind of like numbers, so I hope I'll be a good addition to the team if you appoint me. All right, so I would like to uh, to move this along, and I move that we appoint Lee Youngman to be the CV Fiber Treasurer. I'll second that, this is Ken. Okay, seconded by Ken. Any further discussion? Any questions for Lee? I confidence the organization just dumped 100%. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> any any more woohoos? We can record yeah, that. Lee in a rocks. Lee totally <laughs> rocks. <laughs> Lee's response to Orange joining this was that sounds like a no brainer. He's the most qualified person yeah. on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. All right. Well, without further ado, um, let's uh, let's put it to a vote. Um, if anybody wants to put this to a roll call, otherwise I will assume that we have unanimous approval. Unmute if you'd like to weigh in. Otherwise I'm seeing consensus here. And all right, so congratulations Lee and thank you very much for um, agreeing to join thank us. You. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Welcome. Yeah, so. So I will uh, coordinate with you. I, I know you've got election stuff uh, there in the 
town offices and stuff to do. Um, but I'm, um, uh, I will work with you in the next couple of weeks to try to sort out the bank access and that sort of thing. So it's not just, sure. uh, okay. so it's not just me. Great. That sounds great. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Uh, all right. Ken, was that a hand up or a, or a wave? I was waving to Lee. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> all right. Um, appointment of treasurer, uh, executive committee report back. Um, so uh, the executive committee had a special meeting last Friday to approve the spending of some money on a consultant to help us draft a um, to draft an application for some of the COVID money for a fixed wireless proposal. Um, and that at that meeting, and please correct me if I'm wrong, if I say the wrong number, we approved spending six thousand dollars to hire um, Peter Blum to do to do that work. Um, there was some not to exceeds. Um, by day and an hourly rate of, I think it was $150. Um, we had that meeting, we approved it, and he's uh, he's been been working on that. There is a, a bit more discussion on this, I think, in a later item that we will um, we will spend a bit more time on that. But that's really the uh, the main punchline of that executive committee meeting. Was there anything else, Phil, or anybody else that was there that we talked about that we should be mentioning? No, I, I think that was the uh, gist of it. Okay. Did, Michael? Did, didn't, didn't we also talk about the proposals that that, that C.P. Piper had to review? Or was that not part of the agenda and not yeah. germane? Or, I mean, we did talk about it. Yeah, so so it was it was talked about. It was a, a, say a bit more informal. Uh, we actually have a dedicated agenda item in this meeting to talk about those as well. Uh, the line extension fixed wireless requests. Um, so we will circle back around and talk about those and have a have a report back. Uh, on I, that I just well. wanted to be thorough about in reporting what what transpired in that meeting. That's all. That's true. Fair enough. That, that did happen. I was I was driving, so I was not maybe as attentive as I could have been. Okay. Um, continuing to move along. Um, Grant and project updates. We've got um, uh, some grants in the pipeline. Um, so we were awarded the $100,000 grant from DPS as the uh, kind of capacity building. Um, I'm doing the paperwork um, and all of the all the legwork that uh, DPS is expecting of us. Uh, we're doing that right now, and uh, we are, I think. I haven't heard it that, that, that they need any more information, um, but because this is federal money, there's some additional hoops that, that we have to jump through. It's slightly different than what we had to do for the broadband innovation grant. Um, so that should be coming down the pike uh, real soon now. Um, Ken, do you have, is there any updates on when we can hear about Northern Border Regional Commission grant? Yeah, the um, I don't know the exact dates. I believe it's in the, 20s of August, and there's two announcements. One comes from the congressional delegation, and one comes from the governor's office, um, and they're trying to coordinate. And it's in the 20s, I think the early 20s of August, that those announcements are to be made. Cool. So we should know reasonably soon that it sounds like. Okay. Um, so uh, we had talked about Fred's uh, invoice. If anybody wants to talk more about the for the business plan portion for the um, for the fiber project, we can talk about that. Uh, there's not really that much more to report other than you all should have a copy of it by now. Um, so moving on to the uh, onto the agenda item that uh, probably generated a, a lot more discussion was the fixed wireless application. Um, do you want to take that, David? Sure. The uh, business committee spent um, most of its hour talking about the draft proposal to submit a uh, an application to the Department of Public Service for the connectivity now money to do a fixed wireless build in the district. And the vote ended up four to four. So we don't have a recommendation to the board. Um, the context of that, for those who have not been familiar with it, 
we hired Fred uh, Interisle to do a fixed wireless assessment in the whole district. And he completed that late in July. And we decided based on the work that would it be worthwhile for CV Fiber to submit a grant application under the COVID uh, Connectivity Now program to build out emergency response to students and telehealth and all the other requirements under the H-966 legislation. On Friday, uh, Thursday or Friday, the executive committee agreed to hire Berkshire Telecommunications, which is Peter Blum, to prepare a draft proposal to submit to the state and to submit to the Business Development Committee for a recommendation to the board. At the meeting the last hour, the discussion went on, and there was pretty mixed feelings about um, whether we should take on this kind of responsibility in the next six months. And, and I'll let um, the proponent, uh, who, who, who gave some pretty strong reasons, just admit it to show that we're really something uh, going in business. And those who are reluctant to move forward with it, um, mostly on the business side of things, without a project manager. But I'll let um, the proposal itself, for those who have not seen it, it's uh, for working on 16 towers that would serve, I forget, with the number of unserved people that met the state's requirements. Um, it involved working with it would involve working on towers with Cloud Alliance and VTEL. Um, and let's see what else I can tell you about the proposal. Um, I'll let um, Ken Jones, who was in, pretty instrumental in getting it together, explain more about how we went about doing it. Yeah, um, thanks, David. We need to start kind of at the at the hundred thousand dollar level in other words we we um received a hundred thousand dollars for the public service department this is also covid relief fund money and it is as it must be spent by december and the outcome from that expenditure should be directed towards addressing the emergency and so the philosophy behind this work was that the only work that can be done to en enhance telecommunications during calendar 2020 is to work on fixed wireless. And so that was the reason that we asked Fred to expand his effort and he, he was paid out of the 100,000. And then as he finished his work, and I think, and I, and I think people agree to this, his work is a solid, solid piece that I think we can be proud of. Um, I think we can learn a great deal from. Um, but it itself was not a proposal, which is why we needed to hire Peter to take Fred's work and begin. Granted, this 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 happened starting on Friday, and today's Tuesday. Um, but to begin the necessary discussions and partnerships that are going to be necessary to actually carry this out. So, and, and rightfully so, the discussion during business development had a lot to do with risk. That this nine hundred and fifty thousand dollar project. Today, we could not do it. And we would, or if we attempted to do it, we would probably fail. So we need to do a significant amount of work between today, between the, the date that we, or today, and the time that we are approved of the funds and we again as a board would agree to move forward in order to develop the necessary partnerships. Because keep this in mind, that putting radio transmitters on towers is not a business. We have to have customer relations. We have to have the backbone of being able to address the needs of those customers. We have to do marketing. And so all of those, and, and I don't think us as a body are going to carry out those business functions. We will need partnerships in order to carry that out. So, and I'll, you know, clearly this, my bias is to move forward on this. And a reason is because I think it's in adherence to our initial intent of the use of the hundred thousand dollars i think it provides us a great experience in understanding what it's going to take to be an internet service provider or to partner with and be the the or, organizing body over an internet service provider um, but i also said during that meeting and i'll say it now 
in, I'll say, four weeks, we may very well come to the point where we can't do it. And submitting the proposal to the Public Service Department is not a commitment to do it. It is a request for the funds, and then if they agree to provide us the funds, then we have to go through a grant, a, a grant um, agreement process. And at that point, we can quite legitimately, because we are a new CUD on a new topic, we can quite legitimately say, no, thank you, please allow others to use these resources. So that, that was, you know, the, what the intent was, was to build this emergency, situ emergency infrastructure to provide service to several hundred households um, for $950,000. And, and I'm all, but I'm gonna end by saying one of the additional challenges that we didn't talk about at business development, but it's something we're really gonna need to wrestle with, is what does it mean to have fixed wireless customers that ultimately we hope to be fiber customers? Can we start to develop that sort of transition and, and, and getting people to, be CV fiber customers recognizing that down the road they will have even better service from a fiber fiber connection. That that is that those words not easy, not easy to say, but the actual process of doing that is something that I think is going to be a real challenge. Um, but even with that challenge, uh, again, I I think this is something we should put forward and and we'll keep our feet to the fire for the next few weeks to really understand what it means to be an internet service provider. Okay, so uh, we had David and Ken. Uh, Tom? I was just curious, under this, I isn't that a proposal yet, but um, under this vision, um, would it be CV Fiber that would be the ISP, or would we be, what would the name that would be associated with this effort end up being? Oh, no. Yeah, that's, I think that's a to be determined. I mean, I mean, I, I, I think I have my, my preference that I've not made um, not made secret, but um, I don't know that the uh, the actual um, business model, the operating model, has been decided yet. And actually, and hopefully, actually, I'm hoping with our business plan and operating model discussion that was requested at a previous meeting, I'm hoping we can actually make some concrete decisions about that um, at, in that later agenda item. Because if we can make a decision about that, then that can inform how we proceed, uh, if we proceed with this. Um, so, Michael, do you want to take a take a crack at this? Because because you were you were on the other side of this at the business development meeting and have, have some concerns, I think. Well. I'm not sure I want to right now. Okay. Ray? Jeremy, Jeremy, this is Jerry. I'm sorry I'm not on the internet. Uh, yep. Can I get a minute in? Sure, yeah, well, go ahead, Jerry, and then we'll have Ray. Thank you. So I just, I, I hope everyone gets the opportunity to read uh, what Mr. Blum put together because it's an excellent document. And I would, I would encourage folks to focus on the end of the document, not the uh, attachments, but the discussion of the risks, which are quite real and, uh, and, and very problematic for us, for us getting this uh, potential, uh, potential grant. But also, I, I really want to point out that the time frame for executing this, as, as dire as the need is, uh, the time frame is extremely short, and we are really not well positioned to execute. And in some ways, this can be seen as a distraction from what we are trying to do overall. But otherwise, it's also, as Ken would, I, I, I think, might say, a step forward in getting us to where we need to be. But I really encourage everyone to please read his document carefully and especially read the section on risks that he has at the end, uh, which is qu quite excellent. And that's all I had. I have to add. Okay, thanks, Jerry. Go ahead, Ray. So I was on the business development committee call. So I listened to the back and forth. I read through the document uh, rather quickly. 
uh, but it is impressive. And it's a tremendous amount of effort to take on, but it's an effort um, that is worthwhile. People pointed out that there were risks involved, and I think that's correct. Um, I think there's people also mentioned that there were shortcomings, weaknesses in their proposal. And I believe what they had to say that there were weaknesses in the proposal and that there were things that had to be worked out. I also understand you know, this could be wrong, but the proposal had to go in by Thursday. So here is what I'm willing to support. Uh, what I'm willing to support is that we appoint um, members to a group to identify, to scale it, to determine kind of lessen the risks if we need to, to identify the shortcomings and how we can address those uh, and weaknesses. And I think the members of that group might include David, Greg, Michael, Jeremy Hansen, and Ken Jones to make the decision about what goes in on Thursday. I was, um, uh, I think it was important, uh, Siobhan mentioned it and others then followed up and mentioned it, said, said, we don't have to then go forward when they come back. We can decide at that point in time, whether or not we have the project manager in place, whether we have other infrastructure issues addressed, uh, whether we've addressed the weaknesses that we know that we have currently to work to go forward. So I could support appointing a subcommittee to make the decision about whether and what goes gets submitted. And, and then for us later on to make a determination when the proposed, when the award comes back about whether we're in a position to go forward. That's where I'm at. So I, I would rather facilitate a discussion than than have too much too much comment commentary myself. So I mean, if we could hear from anybody else that has something to say, I would I would like to, like to do that. We need a second for that. There's, there's no there's no there's no motion. Sounded pretty close to a motion. <laughs> Alan. Oh, I I wanted to bring up something that has happened here in Worcester just in the last couple of days. Jeremy knows about this because I contacted him about it. And John Russell does too. And it it it's it, it stressed to me how we're being pushed into situations where we might have to react to things that we didn't expect to happen. But if we don't react, we could be put at a disadvantage either now or down the road. What's happened up here is some one person who lives on West Hill Road, which is the uh, dirt road back way that connects the Rumney School in Middlesex uh, to Worcester. Comcast has uh, a connection cable, obviously, to Rumney. When they built that cable, they actually extended it further along West Hill towards Worcester. John can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I, <clears throat> I think it comes basically to the Worcester town line and maybe 50 feet over or something like that. And why they stopped, I have no idea. Why they even build it, I don't know. Somebody in that area of West Hill has been reading or paying attention to what the legislature has been doing and has been making posts on Front Porch Forum that uh, it's possible that residents of West Hill could get uh, an incentive of up to $3,000 if they were willing to help work to uh, have, have Comcast build out, to extend out their lines uh, from where they currently are so they could get their internet service through them. And this person was essentially trying to drum up interest in the procedure in, in in the proposal and to see if she could get at least i think her goal was around 10 people so they have a, an aggregate of thirty thousand dollars in some ways you know i think john john has has said this to me and i i think he's right in some ways we should be 
supporting anything that does provide fast internet uh, to people who currently don't have it. I mean, that, that's really our mission as an organization. On the other hand, it's pretty clear that we're in a time when things are going to happen either around us, maybe not directly to us, but around us, that will have an impact on how we are able uh, to build a system throughout rural Vermont that provides uh, everybody with high-speed internet. So when, when I, I, I actually, yesterday I, I, I came back from a bike ride and I, I, I parked my car at the bottom of the dirt road that I live on so I can get to pavement on the bike easily. And as I was putting my bike in the back of the car, a guy drove up in his pickup truck. And it's, it's a guy I sort of know here in Worcester. I can never remember his name, but he lives on another one of the hills here, here in Worcester, not West Hill or Hampshire Hill, but Minister Brook. And he said, hey, I heard there's interest and possibility over in West Hill. They're going to get high-speed internet. What's the deal? Are we going to get it soon in other parts of the town? And I said, um, well, there's a lot going on right now. And I tried to explain what the legislature had done and the grants that we've applied for. And he said, well, what's the timetable? What's the plan? And he really, he really, he really wanted to know how we were doing and what, what we could do for him and people in this town who are frustrated at the lack of high-speed internet. So I think we ought to at least do what Ray suggested, which was to move ahead with the idea that maybe we really do want to apply for this money and at least explore what the details might be. I agree the risks are, are, are relatively substantial. I was confused as to whether the speed that would be offered to most homes was 25.3 or something more like 57. Um, so I, I wanted some clarity about that. I also noticed in the coverage maps, there were odd corners of roads where the wireless might be built that could actually not reach certain homes. And I'm familiar with some of the homes or some of the addresses I saw on the map because I know exactly where they are and what the topography is. So I think we're, there's a risk in doing wireless. It's not magical. It's not going to reach everybody unless it's a very, very high antenna, which I don't think based on the height that I saw it, it is. I mean, we have trees taller than that height um around here so i think i think it's an interesting opportunity i think we're going to find ourselves feeling like we're being pushed and we might not be ready to do a lot of these things and i think we're going to have to we're going to have to face the reality that a lot of things are moving very very quickly and we might have to go along with the flow as best we can in order to stay viable as an entity that's trying to do a pretty big project in the long run. You know, we, we, we might have to change things around here and there. I've never been very excited about wireless to tell you the truth because I, I, I'm afraid that people are going to see it as an excuse not to build fiber out into rural areas. It's just another, another sop to the rural parts of the state who have been screaming and yelling. So we'll give them, you know, 25-3 service and we'll, and they'll be happy with that. Um, I, I, I worry about that, so I hope that we can continue working on the idea of fiber to everybody, like EC Fiber has done. But I do think taking an initial step to begin to, to look at whether this is something really maybe we can do and should do would be a good idea. Okay, I have uh, Chuck and uh, Jeremy, did you have your hand up? Okay, you're you're muted. So we do Chuck, Jeremy, and then Tim. If you have had something, go ahead, Chuck. Thank you. Uh, so I actually have had the a similar experience as Alan in here in Moortown, uh, where we have a member of the community, or actually a potential member of the community, who has um, come in and actually made headway with Waitsfield uh, Champlain Valley Telecom um, in past forays at attempting to do that. They've basically indicated they're not at all interested. Uh, however, he was able to drum up a large enough group of, of people raising their hand and saying they're interested 
that they have actually indicated to him that they will be willing to start doing some expansion in the eight to 16 months time horizon. In addition to that, uh, the same individual posted, on, posted to the, the group of interested parties uh, about the Comcast being willing to expand and this $3,000 that's available has encouraged everybody in the community to go uh, file a build, a, I think it's build a home ticket with Comcast, which is sort of the procedural process by which you officially indicate to Comcast that you would like to be considered for service expansion. Um, and so, you know, I, I think, and I've been engaging with this community member quite a bit, uh, and, uh, you know, his, his heart's absolutely in the right place, but I am also conflicted because I really think it puts a fair amount of risk on our potential to build out. Um, and I know he's going to watch this video a little bit later, so hi. <laughs> uh, but, uh. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, I just really want to call out that we, I think, need to move as quickly as we can to take advantage of some of these opportunities that are coming up. Because if we sit idle, the commercial players are going to, to beat us to market and really, um, you know, make the viability of our plans uh, a lot less uh, attractive. Okay, uh, Jeremy. Um, so I actually had sort of that same thought myself of, you know, going after that $3,000 money because I've got crappy internet. Um, I don't, I, I'm, I've decided I, I won't do that. Um, I think that there's a better chance that wireless will come through. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, I, I do think that we need to move. And I also think that we could be cautious and that we could, you know, drag our heels and we wouldn't get anything done. At some point, we need to make the jump and we need to become an ISP or we need to hire someone to be an ISP for us. And I think that in some ways this is valuable because I think it's going to push us to make that decision. I don't think we're ready to be an ISP, but I think that we could be ready to hire someone to be an ISP for us. Um, I don't know, that, that that's my two cents. I think that it is at least worth exploring more, um, although I do think that the proposal does have substantial problems that would need to be addressed, including relationships with um, with some of the partners in that um, in the proposal, doesn't sound like that was well, um, well thought out. Anyway, that's all. Okay, Tim. Um, I, I agree with Jeremy, Matt. Um, sooner than later, uh, there's competition. I'm sure sniffing around, uh, coming up behind you all the time that you don't even know about. I don't know how many other people have tried VTEL uh, LTE service to the home. I was um, lucky and then unlucky enough to try it. Um, I had it for about a year in Roxbury, but the tower was, I believe, up at exit five on 89, and I was crossing over two mountains to try and get it. They qualified me um, for um, LTE service. I was getting about <laughs> six seven megabits download, which doesn't seem like much to this project, but um, it was certainly better than one to two with TDS DSL, which I went back to. Um, the project turned out to be, for me, where I was, a, a flop. Um, they ended up having to take my equipment away and refund me some investment I had into it. Um, and then the other um, item coming up, I am going to be a beta tester for Tesla's Starlink program, which is up in Vermont, um, or at, at least uh, 44 latitude or 44.1 latitude and all the way up to 52 latitude into Canada. And um, I will certainly uh, report my progress with that as I go along with uh, Tesla Starlink, but that will be satellite internet, um, a form of LTE communication, if I'm correct, low orbit satellites. There was another company called OneWeb that I actually uh, did some side work for down in Virginia. 
um, that was doing a similar project and they almost went bankrupt um, unless they uh, get some more backing right now, but they had also, they had launched satellites as well. Tesla has launched satellites already and are ready for beta testers. Um, the the uh, lucky thing right where I am now, I'm in down Rhode Island just to make this call because TDS, um, DSL is too terrible to stay connected all the time where I am. I'm at the third mile point on a copper line from the, uh, the DSLAM. Um, so I'm on gigabit fiber in Rhode Island right now just to uh, make this Tuesday connection. All right. Thanks for that, Tim. Um, so so it's, uh, I see that the hands have died down a bit here. Just to weigh in with my own two cents here is, you know, the the original plan that we were, you know, picturing, if we look go back to David's um, timeline, is that we were going to be spending August through the end of the year um, doing all of the the early work for the first stage of the fiber construction. Um, and I think this wireless project, I, you know, I, I, I do understand, you know, Carpe Diem and, you know, and sees the, sees the money available. Um, I guess I just see it as a, as a distraction that's a bit too risky. You know, is this going to get in the way of us um, actually going and building fiber? I mean, I, I'm hearing some folks say that it actually gets us closer. Um, I'm not sure that, that I'm convinced about that. Um, I think our time, you know, our volunteer time and our the, the money that we do have on hand is going to be better spent um, trying to get, you know, trying to knock it out of the park with the fiber build and not spend, you know, and not spend too much time, you know, with 14 towers or whatever it happens to be, which it's not, you know, it's not totally clear that we even have those 14 towers because some of those are Michael's and he was surprised by, he was surprised to hear that these were proposed. So I don't, I personally don't believe that the, that the uh, project is achievable. Um, I kind of feel sad saying that given how much, how much we've spent on it already. Um, uh, I, I personally am uncomfortable with the risk, but I mean, obviously this is the decision of the board. This isn't a decision of, you know, this isn't the, uh, um, this isn't a dictatorship. So. I get one vote like everybody else, but I would I would still like to hear from more people if we can. I see Michael did sneak his hand up if you're still willing. So Michael, then Tom. Okay, so um, I was reticent to speak to this because the previous meeting for me was uh, kind of emotional. I was very taken aback by Discovering the proposal without having been consulted about it. Um, but I don't want to go there right now. Um, I want to speak to a couple of things. Uh, first of all, the value or lack of value of fixed wireless. Uh, fixed wireless is a great technology and it can definitely deliver very good broadband with very good, if you use very good equipment. Um, What's being proposed is better than 25.3, um, both in my proposal that I submitted last week to the department and the tentative proposal that we might submit on Thursday. Um, we probably can deliver, first of all, it's not 25.3. With wireless, you can do better than that. That's, that's like a SOP to DSL because DSL can't get much upstream. So we can do 25, eight or, or 50 and 15 or something like that. So this, it's really, it can be very substantial. Now, the whole discussion about, there's two kinds of risks. There's the risk of trying to um, stand up a pretty significant project in a short amount of time without a business structure around it and staffing, and that risk is very real, and that's what everyone's been speaking to. The other risk is what some people have spoken to, which is what is the long-term or mid-term impact of fixed wireless customers on the business case of our fiber projects? 
if people have 25, 30, 40, 50 megs, they're going to be reticent to switch to fiber unless the price is really cheap. They're going to say, hey, maybe someday I want 100 or 200 or 500 megs, but boy, this is fabulous. It does everything I want. Why should I switch? And it's going to be hard to, to take these customers and just migrate them into the fiber project quickly, early, which is what the business model requires. For us to break even in a few years, we need to achieve a certain take rate or, or penetration rate. So my conclusion is that fixed wireless belongs in our district, but it belongs there in a selected way. It should not go where we think we're gonna build within the next two years because it's gonna hurt our business case. It should go to the places that are gonna be, that are way down in our schedule or may be never servable by fiber because they're deep in hollows or, you know, you know, two miles down the road where it just doesn't make sense to run $30,000 a mile out to them. There are gonna be some places we won't achieve 100%. We're going to achieve close to that, I think, over time, but we won't. And so there's there's a good reason to put fixed wireless for those remote locations and for the locations that are not going to get fiber for a, a number of years, even if we're doing well. That makes sense to me. Um, I don't know to the extent that the proposed project takes those considerations into account. Maybe it does, because I only got to see it five, ten minutes before our business committee meeting. So I, and I skimmed through it really quickly, and I don't know it, the full content of it. But I suspect that it's more like the products that we got from Interrail before, which is looking at where, where can we maximize coverage, where can we get the most priority and, and eligible customers under the department guidelines to maximize the value of our our proposal to the department so that it will be funded. And that's that's chasing the wrong carrot. It's chasing the wrong brass ring on the merry-go-round. What we want to do is further our own mission. And our mission is to get fiber to as many people as possible as quickly as possible and to make it viable in, in terms of the business case. So I'm not, I love fixed wireless. I have a fixed wireless ISP for those of you who don't know that. Um, but, and I don't object to the use of selected fixed wireless in our district. Um, I think that it's appropriate. I think we need to look again at that proposal deeply and figure out whether it fits with our mission or whether it fulfills the needs to get the funding is it the funding is what's um motivating the proposal it's the wrong motivation but if it's furthering our mission well then that's a better thing um so the other ask some i won't reiterate everything that happened in the business development committee meeting but one thing that's worth for the board members who weren't there to know is that there are currently three redundant proposals for the same area in our district one that's already been submitted to us for approval and we've we as a district are recommending not approving it another that was submitted last week last thursday and then this one all looking at the same, not 100%, but a lot of overlap of individual locations. That's kind of crazy, and it, it, it needs to be resolved. This, this proposal needs to look at that before it gets submitted. I'm not 100% opposed to submitting the proposal, but as it stands now, I am. Um, I guess that's all I'll say for now. Okay, we got uh, Tom, then Siobhan. Um, so I guess David. a lot of things floating around in my head now. <laughs> I like a lot of what Michael was saying there. Um, in, in my area, most of East Montpelier, we're not under most of this plan. And um, 
nominally we have 25-3. Um, the reality is that isn't really what we have. Um, and so, you know, we're cut out a lot of what's available and, and I understand there's people who have, you know, way less than even what I have. So um, I understand the need to serve those people as soon as we can. This is in a national emergency. Um, but during a national emergency, you know, emotions are gonna run high. And another risk form that we haven't discussed yet is the PR, um, which leads into the, you know, customers and, and or the, the competition rather um, down the road. Um, I guess I'll just close. I, I had a question I'm sitting in the back of my mind for a while now, which is um, I really appreciate uh, having gotten a hold of the the Excel sheet, being able to play with the numbers. That's been a lot of fun. Um, and one big part of that that obviously was not done was, OK, what if we put in numbers for how much grant money we get or, or other things? Um, and also what happens when you lower the subscription fees and increase the take rates and, and those kind of things. You can have all kinds of fun numbers where you can get down to like 25 bucks a month where we could blow everybody out of the water. Um, but I don't know how realistic that is. Um, so I'm wondering if anybody can like speak to what's the curve? What's, what's the, the algebra there between increase or decrease in subscription rate and increase in take rate um, and, and where that sliding scale could potentially land for us? If anybody has any ideas on that. That would, I mean, I, I would go to EC Fiber to answer that question. They would know more about the price elasticity. Um, you know, if we pushed the price down to, you know, DSL prices, so $30, $40 a month, would people change over from DSL at a higher rate? Yeah, of course they would. But is, you know, is pushing it that low, can we even make that work given the, the cost per customer, um, you know, that we have to recover essentially at, with each uh, with each drop, so um, I mean you should be able to do that that in the spreadsheet if you like. And there is actually there's a there's also a cell that you can type in if you want to put in like um, if we assume that we get the NBRC grant for example, you can put that six hundred and fifty thousand in there, and just without changing anything, just get a sense of um, how that changes uh, how long it takes us to get to. Um, cash flow positive or um, the equivalent, uh, you know, what, whatever measure we're using for, for success. Um, but so the, the, the question I, that I think that we're trying to answer though, or that we're talking about is that the impact of the fixed wireless project, how much is that going to impact, you know, right. what, goes, what goes in those cells? And is that necessarily going to drive things down or up or not? not change it at all um, so i guess that's my my question i mean i can i know which cells to manipulate and how it how it affects the result i, I just don't know what numbers to put in there are realistic and and you know if i drop it down to 25 dollars a month but increase the take rate to 60 percent, is that a realistic thing to do or is it not um and i don't know if anybody has experience on that or if that would be something we'd want to push back to interrail at some point um but the reason i'm asking is because where we end up with as a business plan and where we think we can land for that kind of thing has an effect on whether or not we think we should move forward with wireless now because if we think we can blow it out of the water in a year or two um then maybe it would have a different answer for what we should do today well i think there's going to be a lot of guessing and making decisions based on um imperfect data um so i want to make sure that everybody gets a chance so right now i have siobhan david greg and michael uh, and andy so, Siobhan? So, I had one observation just from the conversations I've had with people in Orange. They're not going to change. Uh, if they get fixed wireless and they're satisfied with it, they're not going to change. They're, um, the only thing that would make them change is if we could offer them a lower price. Um, even if it's better service at the same or slightly higher price, they're going to be reluctant. It's going to be hard to get the take rate up. So if we're already offering fixed wireless here, bringing the fiber in later will be more difficult. The other question I had, which is going back to the point, one of the points that Michael was making about, is this going to make it more difficult for us to execute our mission, um, is this proposal, I'm just confirming, this proposal is about CARES Act money, and is this the bit that is specifically about getting the internet to the kids and the teachers? 
And is that part of the whole point of this? And so there's no way it's got to do with a specific plan or specific routes or anything like that. It's like, because they're everywhere. And so this is like a scattershot approach to get just getting it out there. And so I, I, I don't know if it's even would be possible for us to amend the proposal to make it more friendly to our mission and our intentions for fiber. But I don't know if a day is enough to even consider that question. And I, so I'm kind of throwing that back out. Is that even something that could be possibly be taken into account and in looking at where this proposal is set up to even look for putting poles up? And that's it. Well, I, I mean, I, I think if we make if we end up making some concrete decisions in the next agenda item, so the business plan and operating model discussion, if we make some concrete decisions, that could certainly inform how we choose to choose to proceed. I mean, um, let's see. So I have uh, David, Greg, Andy, and Michael. Okay, I, I, as Michael was talking, what he was saying, and one of the thoughts happened that went through my brain. If CV fiber is the manager of fixed wireless proposals other than the ones that are assigned to other vendors, we can say that this, you know, we're going to transition you to fiber. You know, you're a customer of CV fiber or a partner of CV fiber, and we're going to transition you to fiber when we have it. My guess is we're not going to have fiber to a lot of places for three to seven years. So from that standpoint, you know, if we have customers on fixed wireless. Uh, some relationship with um, uh, other fixed wireless providers, we can, you know, there's a trade, we could develop a transition plan. Um, I'm not sure that, you know, a customer is a customer, if you are the one that's providing the service, you know, how that service is delivered, or the method that it's delivered is not always the um, the same method. So, I mean, I, I, I see some benefits to trying this, uh, <clears throat> Proposal and it, it needs to be refined. I think we can refine it in the next um, two days. I think the department's going to review on it and get back to us. So there's not a lot of risk to us to submitting it, but I'd like to submit something that was at least a little more thought out. I mean, it was put together in four days. Um, it certainly could have some improvement looking at routes. As far as I can tell right now, the routes are not you know, impacting too much of our initial build. But um, it certainly could be looked re looked at. Okay, uh, Greg. Yeah, so uh, agreeing with David, in, very, uh, in my uh, previous telecom business, we did just that. We used wireless as a uh, infill in a way, and in the contracts, we had the right to convert them to fiber, and the pricing was the same. So the customers didn't care. It, it, it was just so it's about how it's presented and uh, contractually and pricing. So uh, it, we sold it on the basis we can give you wireless now, and in six months, eight months, whatever the time frame was, we're going to bring the fiber to you. And 100%, they all said yes because they want it now. So uh, that and a point I'll make is that from the point of a tower back going upstream, everything is the same between wireless and fiber. So all of the process, uh, and the, I'm assuming we're hiring an IHP and not trying to become an ISP ourselves, but all of that process and decisions, do we do the building, do they do the building? Uh, the support, it's all the same. So the opportunity to learn is tremendous. So it's not a 100% switch from doing it one way under wireless and doing it a different way under fiber. So, uh, it, and as far as I can tell, this is uh, money that is not to be repaid and it can be used very uh, wisely and in alignment with our mission and forward us and really could get us going. And I feel if we pass it over, it'll be harder to get other money. Uh, but it does need to be used uh, judiciously. 
Okay, I've got uh, Andy, Michael, and I think Henry, you had your hand up. Yeah, so I just just reiterating some of David and Greg's thing. I, you know, we want to capture these folks and not let somebody else capture them. I mean, I my assumption is if we don't do this, I mean, somebody else is going to. I mean, and that's actually what part of Michael's argument. So there's a little bit of a logical contradiction there. We're going to have a lot harder time converting a cloud alliance or another third party wireless customer to us than somebody we've already captured as a customer. Um, so, and I also agree with just all the opportunity in terms of voting all the infrastructure and operating aspects of it. Yeah, there's a lot of risk in those things, but I'm also gonna, the big last point is, I assume DPS has responsibility for the overbuild part of this. I mean, just, we can't say, oh, we're not gonna submit because somebody else is submitting and it's an overbuild. That's up to DPS when they dish out the grant money to work out the overbuild issues. Um, you would assume they, they, they put some thought into that. Um, and we also have the right to refuse anyways. So if there is truly an overbuild situation going on, but ideally we're the ones who capture these customers. Okay, uh, Michael, then Henry. Uh, I'm gonna just speak to um, a side issue that Tom brought up that I think might be, that's useful discussion. It's the relationship between uh, retail rates and penetration rates. Um, I think uh, AC Fiber is not necessarily a good example to look at. Um, their rates have been pretty consistent. Um, they have increased the bandwidth for the rates a little bit over time, but they've basically been pretty consistent. And so they haven't really experimented that much with that. But interestingly, uh, Vtel Wireless um, presents a an unusual comparison. They deliver, I don't know their prices at the moment, but they deliver gigabit fiber to all of their customers and they don't sell it as 25 or 30 or 50 megs. I think they sell it as a thousand megs and it's for a particular fixed price and it's relatively low. And I, they got, because they're the, the incumbent telephone company, they just went to every house and anyone who wanted internet got that. In speaking with Michel Guité a week ago, he complained that a lot of people, um, he had a lot of sunk costs in doing that. He had full fiber drops to every house, which is very expensive. And you, you may see EC Fiber sells sells their installation for 150 or Cloud Alliance for 199 or whoever. The real cost is seven, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars for a typical drop. And that that sunk cost is hard to recover unless you keep your customers a long time. And Gita said to me, we've been losing customers. People don't want to pay for all that internet. And we have all this investment in going to their house and we're seeing that wireless is a better business for us because we don't have to do that expensive installation maybe it's a portable installation they install you know an antenna and a radio at the house and if the customers quit you take the antenna and radio and you take it to another house but the fiber when you do that installation it's there forever unless it's damaged and that that investment only works if you keep the customers. So circling back to what Tom was asking, Michelle was offering, or Vtel was offering very low rates and they got a really good penetration rate. And now they're paying a price for that. They don't have the average revenue per unit that a typical ISP does. And they have the sunk cost in all those installations. So that's an interesting data point, and I don't know if we'll get the actual numbers from him ever, but it, it's the anecdote he gave me the other last week. And so, so there's a danger of trying to capture the market with really low prices and then not being able to make the business. Okay, um, I, I, see, uh, I see, I'll have uh, Henry go first and then Tom. Um, so, I'm relatively new to this, but 
um, my question here is is more general. It's the fact that um, the Public Service Department is very much interested in promoting CUDs. Uh, we're a, a CUD, we're at a disadvantage compared to the commercial providers. The commercial providers are having a hard time deciding what they can build out before the end of the year. This whole CARES Act money is is fraught with issues for everybody and you know the question is how is the public service department going to come to our aid since they've stated that we're the prefer preferred provider for rural um, expansion you know and it does it have to be that we have to go after this cares money or will there be other money uh, that we'll be able to access when we're ready for it or or not and, and um, you know the you know are they going to be consider our proposal favorably or give us the opportunity to to do this fiber build because of our uh, legal status as a cud um, does that give us any benefits? Uh, I just don't see how we're going to compete with the commercial providers when we don't even have um, an executive director and and you know haven't decided whether we're going to be our own ISP or not and some of these other things. Um, so that that's my general question: Is there money, other money that we can get when we're ready because of the state's, um, you know, uh, dictated policy. And then there was just one other thing in case this doesn't come up is the line extension thing. There was a line extension for Duxbury, WCTV, and I was just wondering, uh, there was other things addressed regarding the other line extensions, but I couldn't find anything addressing the WCVT Duxbury line extension proposal. So um, just in the interest of just uh, of keep, keeping us on track for time, we're already quite a bit over. I kind of anticipated that. We actually have a separate um, agenda item to talk about line extensions and the fixed wireless requests that the, the department has got. So if we can um, Let's press the pause button on that for a moment. Uh, I want to hear from uh, Tom, though. Thanks. And uh, actually, Henry uh, was right in line with my thinking, which was, I mean, I, I appreciate that comment on having sunk fixed costs there, Michael. Um, and it's, I guess, given how quickly things seem to be changing uh, in the capital, um, I know it's another type of risk. It's a risk of trying to play the future of what is Congress going to do, and and that's pretty risky. Um, but um, you know, if we have a way out of those fixed costs, or at least a way to reduce them to a significant degree, then you know, then market penetration and reduced rates seems it, it serves not only to help us, you know, in a competitive way, uh, but much further with our mission as well of, of trying to you know get this out to people who really need it in order to keep their businesses going in order to you know have their kids be online so um yeah Thanks. all right any other um any other thoughts how should we proceed from here folks I mean, there is a, right? let's go back to Ray's motion that wasn't Ray's a motion. motion. Yet. Let's do it. So, so, so Ray, do you want to? Can you formulate your motion again? So my Sorry. motion is in the chat room. My motion is to create a group to review the proposal, scale it to reduce risk, and serve likely fixed wireless customers in the district. Understand assumptions and organizational infrastructure requirements, and decide whether to submit on Thursday or not. Uh, the group consists of uh, Dave, Greg, Michael, Jeremy, and Ken. Second. Second. Okay. Second so, by Chuck. So are you going to open comment on that? Yes. Fire so the one, my first con Yeah, so no Michael on the committee. I think there's a conflict of interest. 
Would you take that as a friendly amendment, Ray? Uh, does Michael feel like there's a conflict of interest? I do. <laughs> so I, I'm going to strongly oppose that because I do feel strongly there's a conflict of interest. Okay, I'll accept as a friendly amendment. All right, Chuck. Chuck, you seconded that. Is that all right? That's fine with me. Okay. Is there somebody else that wants to be a part of it? It would be good to have. Um, it'd be good to have a fifth. It's a it's a I two could. day commitment, folks. Jeremy, I could okay. I could do that. All right. Thank you, Jeremy. So can we uh, friendly friendly that again, yes. Ray and Chuck? Yes. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, guys. So to restate, Dave, Greg. Jeremy, Jeremy, and Ken. Um, are all the folks whose names are in that list, are you okay with that? Yes. Okay. So uh, we have, a, it's moved and seconded. It's been um, gently amended. Um, any, uh, any further discussion about this? Yes. Michael. Um. Uh, yes, Sandy, there is a conflict of interest. Um, I don't have a problem with not having a decision authority in that group, but damn well be, better be talking with me about it because this proposal is counting on my assets and my cooperation. And if you want to succeed, I want to help you succeed and you better not freeze me out like I've been for the last two weeks. So that's don't dis to, don't disagree. Yeah, I don't, no, I don't disagree with that, Michael. Yeah, I don't really disagree with that. And I think Greg will represent you well, and I, I think some other folks will represent you well. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the mechanics well, were with that. So more than that, I mean, I think yeah. that Michael needs to be part of the discussion, just not. Sure. Sure. Yep. You know, I mean, if we're using yep. his assets, he needs to be included <laughs> in that discussion, in my opinion. Remember. You can't represent me well without knowing what I can do and what business arrangement I can accept. So I have to be okay. part of the discussion. I don't have to be part of the decision. Okay. Yeah, so I would agree, Michael, 100%. Yeah, no right. problem. That's, that's the crux. Yeah, yeah. You can't be on both sides at the same time. So, but we do need to negotiate with you and have a clear agreement. We only have two days. So we'll, we'll be right on it. Yeah. <laughs> get busy. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, so let's let's do this as a as a roll call. Um. So um. So we have raised motion. Um. I'm just going to do in the order of video on my screen. I have this written down. Um. Jeremy, I can send this to you, or I I can post it in the chat. Um. John Morris. Yeah, okay, John is a yes. Uh, Michael? Abstain. Okay. Andy Gilbert? Yes. Okay. Chuck? Yes. Ken? Yes. Jeremy? I'm not a voting member. Oh. Yeah, or am I because Michael abstained? It would probably uh, be better if you if you voted. I mean, um, it was just, he, he the, hold on. He didn't recuse himself, so his oh. his abstaining vote. Yeah, you're you're right. Thank thank you for that. Okay, uh, Greg. <laughs> yes. Siobhan? Yep. Tim. Yes. Tom. Yes. Okay, Alan. Yes. Henry. Yes. I guess I maybe didn't need to do this after all, but <laughs> good, good way to spend the time. David. Yes. Ray. Yes. Okay, Phil. Yes. Okay. We have it unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Okay, so Ray's motion passes. Let's uh, let's move along to the next um, 
just as complicated agenda item. Um, I'm, I am confident that we can plow through this, and as long as you all are willing to make decisions, which I see a decisive crew in front of me. David has a beer, Tom has a beer, it's decision night. All right, business plan and operating model discussion. I have some concrete questions for y'all. It came up earlier, are we going to be our own ISP or are we gonna hire somebody? We're gonna hire somebody. Okay. Hire somebody. Hire somebody. Hire okay. a company. Is, is there is there Hire. anyone out there? So so we have talked about this in previous meetings. Um, is there anybody out there that thinks we should spin up our own infrastructure? I mean, our own office and back office network stuff and whatever. Wow, I, lo I love that consensus. I Siobhan, I see you. Perfect. Siobhan's <laughs> um, got a new job in retirement. <laughs> the only the, no because i want to have a voice on the board so the only the only thing is i i worry that over time if we're making sure that we are in control of policy and what's being done in our name if we're the isp then we control that um if we're if we hire somebody to do that I don't know how much control we retain over that. I don't know how answerable they are to us. I, I, that's, and that may be um, a lack on my part just from lack of experience because I'm a state employee, have been my entire career. So I don't know how businesses work in this kind of situation. So, but my concern is serving everyone in my town and serving them well and at prices that everybody can afford, not just the people like me who can afford a higher rate. Um, and that's that's really important to me. And whatever model makes that possible is the one I wanna go with. Um, and I, at this point right now, if we wanna go fast, hiring somebody who's already doing the business, but maybe with the understanding that eventually we'll take this over, maybe the way to go but i don't know i don't know but i am i am i'm ready to go with let's hire somebody okay. i'm not objecting uh, i'm just saying i've got thoughts and I'm okay done. appreciate your thoughts uh chuck any thoughts of yours yeah two two thoughts come to mind on this and one of them is actually uh i think a good segue from what siobhan was saying and that is i actually think it will be hard to decouple down the road and sure we could make that decision but that's a big decision that has huge impact on customers has huge impact on the established business relationship with a potential operator um, and i think would need to be considered essentially the nuclear option only um, and and so you know i i just want to call that out because i think that will be highly problematic to do that um, the second thing I would just like to point out is if there's any way we can get Waitsfield, Champlain Valley Telecom, you know, into that conversation, they are just such a wonderfully customer centric organization and they really try to do right by their customers. And, and one of the reasons they haven't pursued doing extension of their territory to date is they wanted to make sure their existing customers were taken care of first. And, and I just, really fundamentally appreciate how much they care about doing right by their customers. And, and so, you know, I, I don't know if they'd even be interested in this. I'm sure some conversations have been attempted in the past to that, to that effect, but uh, you know, uh, any way we can get them to the table on that, I would strongly encourage. Okay. Uh, Tom. It's been a couple of weeks since I read through the business plan. I'm trying to recall the, the pluses and minuses laid out. Um, and I think I was trying to remember that I think one of the major pluses of owning was as money might maybe become available down the line in significant portion from the state, um, that we would maybe have greater flexibility of what we do with that and what it means to our bottom line and what rates we can charge and, and all that, um, where that might get a little bit trickier if we were going with somebody else. Am I wrong in that? And if so, how? Well, I, I think it can be a little bit of both. I mean, it's however we we arrange it, Greg? 
Yeah, so having been an ISP, uh, there's two parts, basically. There's the business side, and then there's the technical side. And I would advocate we're contracting out everything to start, but we can uh, absorb the business side, the customer service in the future, should we choose to. Uh, but uh, the technical, I think we would always want to contract out. So um, no decisions need to be made at this point. Well, I, I think we need to start at least <clears throat> heading head in a direction. I mean, I think we can make a course correction, but I think at least insofar as um, conversations like should we um, should we build and own the fiber, or should Washington Electric build it and we lease it? I mean, that's part of what was in the the business plan. Right. Um, I mean, my my instinct and you can all shoot me down or support as you like. My instinct is that, um, you know, I see Ray mentioning um, paying for this, the capital stuff with grants and I agree, let's let's get the grants, let's go build a bunch of our own, uh, our own fiber. And if we have some, if WEC has some fiber that's nearby that we can lease from them later, that we can, you know, pay for um, an ongoing basis rather than having to front all of that ourselves, I think we can do both. But I think in the short term, I think we we look at our what four point seven million dollar project, you know that that David pitched to NBRC and that we're looking at um, pitching to Vita. Let's go with that and let's build it. It'll be ours and we'll supplement that then with with whatever WEC builds and whatever else we can sort of scrape together from, you know, from whatever other grants that we see. And this is sort of just kind of studiously avoiding the. Uh, the wireless element, um, which I think we'll have to circle back around to, um, but because we won't be eligible for the <clears throat> municipal bonds for some time, that you know, leasing from WEC or leasing from someone else may be our only way forward in the intervening two years. Um, so, I, I, I guess I would like to see if everybody is roughly on board with that sort of that idea. If we can move forward with that and then I have another concrete question for you Ken yeah so I, I almost agree entirely um, the thing is our cost of capital is going to be fairly high to the extent we have to go even to Vita and certainly we can pursue grants but my guess my my dream is that the grants allow us to do the drops so that WEC has a reason to do fiber for its own purposes along the poles but they don't have the reason to drop to each of the addresses. So we use our grant money to do the drops and let WEC, who has a low cost of capital, um, do this fiber, that sort of teamwork, and then we lease and we lease the fiber. That sort of teamwork to me, especially at the outset, I, is a dream sort of connection that I would like to strive towards. I really love that idea, and I think that could make that could make it a much more cost-effective project. I think, and just to be the uh, just to be that guy, um, can you get WEC to agree to that in the next few months, the next six months? I mean, will they will they bite? Will they say yes? Let's go and do that. Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, so, but I mean, for you know, for the folks who have been our liaisons to WEC. Do you have a sense that WEC is ready to move? And if we sort of plop this down in front of them and said, we want to build fiber next year, yay or nay, what would they say right now, Michael or Greg? Uh, they've come a long way. They've not said yes yet, but they've come a long way in the last six months in the, in the a favorable direction. So it's possible. And, and in recent discussions, I think they're leaning more towards the model that they don't want to be an ISP at all, but they would be willing to run the fiber. So they're getting close. Um, Michael? If they were asked today, they would say nay. And yes, I agree with Greg, they've come a long way. Um, the chairman of the board is all the way. He doesn't have the whole board behind him. The staff is scared. They would love to do it, but they're scared that they're going to lose they're they're going to lose money, and the member the members will end up having to pay 
pay to cover that and it'll drive rates up. They're, they're real scared. They have a feasibility study that's almost complete from NRTC and NRTC's numbers are doubly expensive compared to inter aisles projections. Doubly. And that's scaring the bejesus out of the staff of WEC. Can they be brought around? Yes, they can. But I, it, can they be brought around in the next two months? I would be very pessimistic about that. Um, how will the auction we can't discuss turn out? That could change an awful lot. But we just don't know who's going to come out ahead there. There's a lot of different possible bidders, and we just don't know. And frankly, I think as much as we all are anxious to make it happen now, that auction is going to be such a determinant for who's going to be triumphant in the in the market next year and for the next 10, that decisions about who should be the ISP and whether we're going to partner with WEC or not and how, we need to kind of wait until January or February to find out how that turns out. And that's tough because we don't want to wait. We're all really, we've been at this for two and a half years and we're anxious. But I, <laughs> that's such an enormous, you're going to have such an enormous impact. Um, but I think that's something we ought to consider. Well, and it's again, it's not a binary decision. It's not we can choose combinations of these. Chuck? Um, this is more a question to those more knowledgeable than I. Uh, I do know WEC has some fiber already. Um, as an example, there's a substation two properties away from me that is shown on the maps as having fiber, um, does that mean that they're, they have infrastructure along some of those poles and we could theoretically pitch doing drops in those kinds of places on the okay. sooner side while the whether they're willing to run new fiber question gets answered down the road? It's, it's the wrong fight, it's the wrong place. It's on transmission poles. Yeah, okay, it's I, that, I thought that might be the case. To connect substations it's part of the velco network in a sense even though WEC velco built it for WEC and they've only built to a few places so far and we need to be on the WEC distribution poles the ones that go in front of people's houses to do drops and so as tempting as that sounds it's it's not the right fiber for us okay thank It'll you be useful. it will be useful to us because of backhaul between towns and that sort of thing Okay, so um, again, keeping an eye on the time, I still have one one more question that I want. I, I I would like to have an answer if we can manage this today. Can we decide which um, which routes we want to build first? Can Should we, we be say an executive session? Executive session? Yeah, executive session for that discussion I, or not? Uh, maybe. But but every well hold on but everybody has a copy of the feasibility study. If I say, I think we should start with the blue and yellow. We're not violating anything, so that's except that we have some reason to believe that certain parties are now in possession of our proprietary information. Yes, that's true. And by, and by talking about that publicly, we are explaining that. Okay. I mean, I, I just, I picked those two out, so we could easily do any of the other ones. I mean, course, this, this, this decision is going to be based in part on who we choose to be the ISP that we contract with. If we're going to work with ValleyNet, there's a more logical option. If we're going to work with Waitsfield Champlain Valley, there's a more logical option. I mean, um, you know, we could certainly work with either one on any of these, you know, given backhaul, um, is that a decision that you all want to make? I mean, we have to make it at some point. If we're going to start putting together the, the VITA application, if we do here in August 20s, whether we get the uh, Northern mm -hmm. Border grant, or do we sit and chill and wait until we hear about that? What do you think, Greg? 
Well, I suggest we wait until the next meeting. The, uh, this funding for wireless may have some impact on that decision. And, and also whether we had got that funding. And since none of us had any time to read it, we really can't speak to it at this point as to whether where we would want to, to be deploying wireless would have some overlap with fiber. Okay, so so for, the, for those folks that are doing that review in the next two days, I would say just be aware then of where we have the other proposed, the other proposed routes and let's look and see what the uh, or those overlaps or not happen to be. So, will all of you be ready, willing to make that decision at the next meeting? We set up an executive session. I see Maybe. Andy smiling. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure you are. You're muted. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I I think yeah. As much as we can make decisions, realizing we might whatever, but yeah. I, I yeah, I'm comfortable with with pushing the ball, especially if we're getting funding approved. I mean, yeah, so we're gonna have to make these decisions. So. Okay, any other um, conclusions that we want to come to? Any discussion about the business plan and operating model? Uh, Henry, I see your hand. Yeah, just one comment. Um, we're Green Mountain Duxbury is mostly Green Mountain Power. So I, I imagine there's other towns that aren't in the WEC um, service area as well. I just wanted to throw that out there. That is true. And that will need to be um, accounted for in our um, longer term plan. And, and also. Uh, uh, Go ahead, and, Henry. Also, um, you know, saying that it's going to be the whatever blue and yellow. Um, does that including the the fact that Washington and Duxbury have been added in? Your or? sound cut out. Oh, your sound uh, cut out. Can you say that again? Does the does the feasibility plan now include Duxbury and Washington? Okay, no, it so doesn't. It doesn't would, include that right now. I would suggest that those towns be included before that decision is made or well so so let's so let's be clear not all towns had a pilot area oh okay uh, had coverage so my town berlin for example wasn't may or may not <laughs> well well so so i mean well there are there, there are portions i mean it's it, it is covered in in portion but in terms of you know, there's there's other places that are that are also not covered. So, um, but get, given that we have the information that we have at present, you know, if we're able to update the the feasibility study, and it looks like Duxbury or Washington look like, you know, tantalizing targets, then yeah, heck yeah, let's let's move forward with that. But I think again, given the information that we have, and sadly Duxbury's late, you know, late coming to the game, um, I. I don't know that we will be able to fully account for, you know, any additional information that we have from Duxbury or Washington. I feel I feel bad about that, but I think we have to make do with with what we have right now. Uh, any other thoughts about um, actually? But go back to pilot, David. Um, so how do you get a pilot? So you say that there's some towns that have pilots. So how would I pursue that? So, so, so Henry, let's let's take this offline. We can talk okay, about the feasibility no study, yeah. and then we'll uh, and we can sort this out and see what that would look like from your perspective. Then, uh, David. Yeah, I just want to make sure that Jeremy ha Jerry hasn't said anything, but he sent out a a matrix analysis of some of this stuff. And if you haven't looked at it, please look at it. And it looks at pros and cons of, of different things. And I know Jerry did not get a lot of feedback on that. I got no feedback on it, but that's, you know, people are busy. When did it get sent out? And also, where did I put the my copy of the business plan? One of you stole it. <laughs> yeah, so, exactly. so, so here's what I'll do. I will, I, I will send that out. I will send that out for everybody. So business plan. Now, do you want the feasibility study or the business plan, Siobhan, or both? You're muted, Siobhan. Sorry, 
um, I can find the feasibility study. I can't find my copy of the business plan. I don't know what I did with it. Okay, Maybe I, I you know, I'll, it. Sure. I'll, I'll send a copy of all of that out and then Jerry's uh, Jerry's uh, decision matrix. Is that what we called it? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I will send that out as soon as we're done with this meeting. Um, Thank you, okay. Chair. Anything? You're welcome. Anything else on business plan operating model? This was a was a requested agenda item. Okay. Moving along. Uh, line extension fixed wireless requests. So I think uh, Jeremy, are you the spearhead for that one, or? <laughs> folks reviewing um, that if you want to give us a quick overview if you can i'm going to be submitting it uh, i don't know if i'm the spearhead maybe that's something that we should have uh figured out is who was the lead on that because it did seem like you know too many indians not enough chiefs in this particular case um i don't know so yeah why don't you go ahead michael okay can you explain that item? I, there, there's no fixed wireless in the line extension program. So I'm trying to understand what you're talking about. Okay, so so we had, because CUDs have the ability to weigh in on proposed line extension, line extensions in their territory and fixed wireless and fiber builds in their, um, in their territory, I wanted to, you know, the folks that are sending stuff to DPS to report back on. So if you want to mention the, you know, tethered aerostat um, and how how we are responding to the various requests that we're getting from DPS. Uh, if you see. just give a short summary, that would be great. Sure. So, or David could. David. Yeah. So the uh, the requests, the uh, requests for proposals came from the Department of Public Service and for some reason, Jeremy and myself were the two people they were sent to. I inadvertently thought there was only three other people on the committee besides myself. And at Chris, there was no chair and no no lead on it. And then, um, but anyway, we got five proposals, two from uh, Waitsville Telecom for fixed for fiber to the premises for 26 houses in Wartown. We got a proposal from Consolidated Communications for 300 plus fixed uh, fiber to the premises in Elmore. We got a proposal from Topsum Telephone for 20 something fix, uh, fiber to the premises in Orange. We got the Aerostat RTO proposal for, I don't know, 700 uh, premises in Calais, uh, Middlesex, and wherever the balloon could reach. And then we got uh, VTEL had a proposal for Washington and, a, and some in Duxbury, Middlesex. And I prepared a map on the ones that I could map. Um, so I you know, crafted a list of criteria. Michael Berenbaum improved the criteria for how we should review these. Um, in any event, we we said anybody that was going to provide fiber to the premises, we weren't going to object to. Um, and the fixed wireless one from um, RTO, the dirigible proposal, we felt pretty uncomfortable with since it's only up 95% up. Um, it's on a 2000 foot tether. It was going to be based at the Kent historic site in, in Calais. And so when I saw that, I went to the select board at Callis and asked them whether they had an opinion on this. And last night at the select board meeting, they unanimously voted to oppose such an idea. So we put, that was one of our criteria. So we put that in. It's probably our only, um, only. That only is the only one that we're objecting to. What, Jeremy? That's the only one that we're objecting to, I believe. Right. So. We got, um, Jeremy's going to submit the letter to the department um, objecting to that one. Um, so we should get another batch of them today or tomorrow. I haven't seen them yet. So that's sort of the update. Oh, David, do you have the exact, e would you be able to forward me the email address that I should be sending this to? I think I sent I think it, I sent it to you this morning. Okay, okay like I just wanted week. to make sure that I had that. Yep. yep. <laughs> Thank okay. You. And in the future, Jeremy, is it okay if you are the lead on this? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I will oh, wait, which one? <laughs> no, Jeremy, Matt. <laughs> okay. Seeing as I am submitting, um, 
so when I send this in, I will have them. I will ask them to email new things directly to myself, and then I'll distribute it to everyone else. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Um, moving along. Uh, audit quote. Greg, do you have an update on uh, the quote from Batchelder? Uh, I don't have the firm numbers, but I spoke with her on Monday, and she promised to have it for us tomorrow. And so I'll forward that to you. Okay. And just for folks um, coming in late to this, this was a to uh, for us to to get an audit or a financial review. Um, in anticipation of needing that to apply for the Vita loan. Okay, thanks for that, Greg. Um, next meetings, uh, we are. Jeremy, we we're doing. Can yes. we jump into the uh, communications committee uh, oh, item? Next? Absolutely, go for it. Okay, um, I'll keep this short and sweet. I'd like to make a motion to welcome Alan Gilbert to as an official member of the communications committee. Uh, he was instrumental in writing that last round of press release that we put out. Um, he, he has a great grasp on the issues, much better than I do. Uh, and I think he would make a great addition to uh, the committee uh, and help help steer us in the right direction. So um, yeah, awesome. the, the, mo the motion is officially worded, motion to add Alan Gil Gilbert to the communications committee. I second. Okay. Uh, who is the second? Is that Bill. Phil? Okay. So motion by Chuck, second by Phil. Uh, any further discussion? Alan, you okay with this? I'm happy to serve. Yay! Great. All right. Anybody else want to get on in this party while we while we have the agenda item? Not everybody at once. All right. Okay. So uh, if you want to do a roll call vote, we can do that. Otherwise, let's assume that we are all approving. Um, so unmute if you'd like to vote no. Otherwise, I think we have unanimous consent. And it's unanimous. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Alan. Um, glad to see you stepping up for that. All right, so next meeting. Um, do we want to meet in two weeks? We will have more information <laughs> about the uh, Northern Border Grant. We'll have more information about some of the other funding. Um, is everybody okay with, uh, let me find the date, uh, the 25th, Ken? So I have a question. The Business Development Committee is going to meet again immediately after this meeting um, in order to consider resumes. Well, or not not meet again. We're, we... I'll continue, continue the meeting. It was in recess. Sorry. Um, yeah. And so my question to the, the, the body is, what decision... Who is going to be making the decision on who gets hired for that position? Does it need to come back to the full board? Um, yeah. Which case I would ask for a, perhaps the possibility of an emergency meeting fairly quickly. Well, so we could authorize the uh, business development committee. We could grant them that power to to make that to make that hire or not. Or we could recess this meeting, go into the business development committee meeting. <laughs> oh, uh, yes. so you're, you're going to have to find yourself, you're gonna have to find yourself a good pair, though. So, so let's see here. Let, let's let's do it this way. So, business development committee is going to meet. Um, should we have a, a meeting sooner, like next week? Just a short a short one, just to talk about hiring an executive director, like a one item. Six yeah. to six twenty. Yeah. Any objections to that? Yeah, it's a possibility that we're not going to recommend somebody. So we yeah. may need another. We may yeah. need another week to gather more applications. You may not. We may have, morning a meeting for next week may just be wasted. I don't know. Can we cancel? We can have a meeting and then have it, it uh, just immediately uh, ended. Yeah, it's it's easy enough to cancel a meeting too. I mean, that's that's okay. much less onerous. Right. That's, that's so, my only point. August eighteenth at six p.m. and then we can decide if we're going to have another one after that, or should we right away schedule for August twenty fifth? Twenty fifth. Right away schedule for the twenty fifth. Go for it. Is okay. that a motion, Siobhan? 
<laughs> I move that we schedule a meeting for August 25th and for the 18th. Okay. The one one topic of the agenda for the 18th being the hire and with canceling if we don't have a recommendation and the blah 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 for the 25th. Okay. I hear a motion. Have a second. Second. Okay. Phil seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, that seems pretty easy. So I don't know how this will work if we have a meeting next week because ideally I will be on my honeymoon and I am not sure <laughs> if we can get someone else to take notes if we do have a meeting and I am not in town. Or yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll sort that out. Go, go have fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Aren't you going where there's Wi-Fi? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I thought he was committed. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So, um, moved and seconded. I don't think anybody's going to argue with this. If you'd like to argue with it, that's fine. Otherwise, I'm going to assume I'm not hearing any screaming. I'm going to assume that we have <laughs> unanimous consent. And <sighs> so we do. Okay. So, our next meeting is on August 18th, and then another meeting after that on the 25th. All right. Um, Sorry, I, I missed it. Who, sec who seconded that one? I did, Jeremy. Uh, who said I did? <laughs> Phil. Phil. What, was that Alan? No, Phil. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I, I... <laughs> My audio is kind of cutting in and out, and I'm having a hard time recognizing people's yeah. voices right now. I apologize. We need hand waving in addition to just yelling because you can't tell who the hell's talking with 16 freaking <laughs> Zoom cameras open. Okay, so yeah. hey, I'm talking. Now. Okay. Well, Ray, right. your cat's <laughs> filming the video for you. <laughs> okay. All right. We we're we're good with our meetings. Let's hope. Nope. Uh, so let's move on to uh, roundtable, Alan. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting meeting. We obviously have a lot of work uh, ahead of us, and I look forward to it. Okay, Andy. Uh, yeah, just echo that. And, and Michael, I didn't, uh, you know, again, agree. I, all the respect in the world for you and everything. We just got to do it right. You'd be a partner. So that's why I had to say that. So. Uh, Chuck. Nothing today. Have a good week, everyone. David, David Healy. I'll see everybody in the uh, re reassemble <laughs> BD meeting. Yeah. All right, David went. <laughs> David I'm went. here. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone. Uh, good to attend my first meeting. All right, uh, Greg. It's getting exciting. <laughs> Henry. Um, I'm interested in uh, what's going to happen over the next few weeks, and I'm looking forward to us moving forward. Uh, Jeremy. Well, uh, welcome to the new folks, and uh, thank you very much to David and Michael and everyone else who's been putting in a ton of work on these things behind the scenes, so thanks. Uh, John Morris. I have nothing to add. John Russell. Okay, I saw him flash his mute on and off. I, <coughs> I'll re re read that as a pass. Ken. I really appreciate the discussion tonight um, and and the. Uh, fleshing out what we recognize as some of the challenges, but I think this is a great group. I appreciate being a part of it. Uh, Michael. Um, both the meeting before and this meeting and the meeting to come are roller coasters for me today. Um, <laughs> my, my my commitment to CV Fiber is deep and abiding, and I want you all to remember that. And Andy, I love you. I know that you meant no offense. I didn't take offense. Um, so everything's good. Uh, Phil. Oh, Phil just dropped off. 
Okay, we'll come back to him if he rejoins. Uh, Ray? So a few years ago in Costa Rica, I went white, white water rafting for the first time. And so I think that we have been in like class one rapids for the last year and a half. We're about to go to class <laughs> four. And it's going to be rough going. And we're just going to have to ride it out and not fall out of the boat, not kill ourselves. So I think we can do it. All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Siobhan? So, um, I had something in my head. First of all, Jeremy, congratulations. And I wish you all of the best. Um, I've, I've got a lot going on in my head right now that I'm very kind of wound up and, and content at the same time. It's very strange. Um, but I really do appreciate all of the hard work that all of you put into this and all of the thought that you put into this. Um, and I guess that's it. Tim? Uh, glad to be part of the uh, group here. Um, seems to be a lot of uh, fun people and very intelligent people. Um, glad to see all that and uh, look forward to uh, staying on board for quite a long time and see this thing through. All right, Tom? Yeah, so in addition to uh, congratulations to Jeremy, uh, also thank you, Jeremy, for sending around that um, NPR Planet Money episode. That was an interesting cautionary tale. Hopefully we are in a different uh, political setup here in Vermont than <laughs> they were experiencing in that story. But um, still, it was good to you know have both eyes open about what's out there and, and what we could have up against us down the line. So yeah, thanks. Never, I never tend to be a worst case person. Yeah, there you go. All right, Phil, Phil, once you connect, do you want to add anything? You're, you're, you're muted. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm back. Uh, there you go. Oh. You're good. Okay, yeah, my, my uh, program just closed suddenly and I had to come back. Um, I, I think everybody's uh, said uh, anything I would add to, so I'm, I'm good to go. Um, and uh, I, I would like to add something. I, I didn't make it an agenda item. Uh, it will be an agenda item in the future. I think we need to have a uh, subcontracting policy. And I think we have some, uh, we have some trust issues I think we need to resolve. And, w and I would respectfully ask board members to please, please don't keep secrets. Please don't try to play, um, you know, to hide things. We're only going to get this done if we work together and push the same direction. And the fact that we had somebody who we kicked off the board who is now behind the scenes doing work for us and we didn't know about it. Please, please just loop us in. We, we need to know these things going forward. But I think we also need to, to take a long look at our policies and our contracts to make sure that we're not surprised by something like this again. Um, and if I haven't already talked to you, what I'm talking to you about, what I'm talking about right now, please feel free to give me a call and I will happily chat more about this. But um, I'm going to move that we uh, adjourn the governing board meeting and reconvene the uh, business development committee meeting. A second. Can I get a by... friendly amendment that I get to go to the bathroom, please? Sure. Yeah. A little bathroom no, break no, between. No, no. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah. We'll we'll start at we'll start at eight. You'll have a couple minutes. Okay. okay so great. I'm gonna I'm not gonna minutes. go through the, I'm not gonna go through the whole process. I'm gonna assume that everybody's good with this. So yeah. Once you take your uh, take your two three minute bio break, return back here, and we'll hand it back off to David, and talk about some um, talk about some resumes that we got. Resumes. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Worka. I'm gonna drop off, Jeremy. Right. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Sounds okay. good. We'll see you in a bit. Bye. Right. I may have to drop off too, David. I'm going to make you an organizer in any case. Uh, okay. If you want, if you want your part uh, recorded, you're going to have to click the record button separately. I, I do have the recording okay. going up until this point, though. Okay, so I'll hit it.
Still recording. Oh, good. Thank you. I wonder Darren. if I go though. I wonder if I go that if, if oh, it's going to. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll pay attention to it. Yeah. I, I will let you know before I go. I'm not just going to drop off. Okay. Thanks. I just have I have some something else eight ish. Sure. Yep. Well, while we're waiting, I just have a question. I just looked at the VTEL spreadsheet and there's all these locations in Duxbury that are listed in there. Um, I, would, I wasn't aware of this and I'm wondering if we, we want to uh, recommend to go ahead with this anyhow. And I mean, VTEL isn't even in our we're in consolidated territory and there's um, all these locations in the middle of consolidated territory with no VTEL there. So I'm yeah, just... they're a fixed wireless provider, so they're independent of consolidated. You, you don't you don't have VTEL wireless there? Because we, we do have VTEL wireless over here in Moortown. Well, I mean we're in the mountains. I don't know where they'd even put them. You know, they're so saying they, on Camel's Hump Road, and I don't know where you could put a tower for that. So they, their tower to serve Duxbury and Moortown is actually on Bolton Mountain. I see. So it only hits, it only hits the west-facing slope. It yeah, I, I can tell you I have neighbors who use VTEL, but I attempted to purchase their highest-end antenna and get it placed on my property. And their text came out and walked all over the place and couldn't find a spot. And they're like, you must be right at right, I don't know, right in a gap or something. Okay, thank you. Henry. All right. Is Siobhan back? Nope, Siobhan's still on a break. I want to speak, I want to speak to Henry for a second. About yeah. whew, she's back. Four or five years ago. Um, somebody in Duxbury requested that we set up service in your town and we came out with a trailer and a tilt up mast and set up an access point up at the top of camel sump road okay and, and managed to get service to a lot of places and then just as we were about to pull the trigger and set it up comcast came along and kind of pushed us out and so we never did but I can tell you about the names of the people, you know, do you know Pat Zachary, for example? Yes. Maybe. Okay. Right up at his property. That's where we were doing it. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. Guys. I think we're mostly back. Um, so we're back to looking at resumes and uh, Jeremy sent out four resumes. Um, I reviewed all four of them. I saw one that was really okay to me and one that was so, so, so. so so can I can um, I point something out? We actually have one of the candidates in the meeting with us right now. Yeah. If we want to talk about personnel and hiring, we may want to go into executive session. Oh gosh. Or, okay. Um, well, I mean, otherwise, Orca is going to continue um, recording this. And and Sam did say earlier that if we just asked him, he would he would go. But it is being recorded by Orca and us right now. I guess if Sam is willing to leave the meeting, that would be great for me. Um, so we can have an open I think we should go. I think we, I don't think that's right. I think we should go into executive session because it okay. shouldn't be recorded on Orca. 
Okay. I agree. So how do we do that? So I'm going to move that we go into executive session to discuss. Um, to Don't discuss we need to find competitive disadvantage or something like that? This first. Personnel, there are personnel um, topics also a part of the list. Yes, but and so you can just jump straight into personnel discussions. You don't you don't need to find that. I mean, I if, if you're okay. if you're negotiating a contract or if you if there's a uh, legal, um, you know, if there's a lawsuit involved that we don't, we don't want to discuss in, in public. But yeah, so I'm going to move that we go into executive session to discuss a personnel matter. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Bye. So does that mean Sam has to leave the room? Yep. So any anybody who's not on the business development committee, unless the business development committee wants those folks to be here. Okay. Sam and Orca need to jump off. And I don't have a problem with other members of the Non business committee being at, at present. I would uh, be positively. I would encourage anyone who is um, a delegate or an alternate um, is, is is. I agree. Invited into okay. the executive session. Yeah. All right. So Sam, I'm Sam I just to... want to thank you for uh, for joining and getting a taste of how we operate. So uh, I, I assume we'll have a follow up conversation soon. All right, and so we'll, we'll give them a couple more seconds, and then I will just uh, I will just boot them. Sorry. So Jeremy, I can. Probably not at their desk. Am I probably. am I on the business committee or or not? You can. You're invited to this executive session. Okay. All right. So Jeremy, I get if you look at the text, the chat room, the John Morris did not get the resumes. Oh, I sent it to the whole. The whole board. I sent it yeah. to the, the distribution list, John. I can send it to you directly if you'd like. I'm just wondering if he's oh. not on the distribution. Oh, or maybe you know what? I only sent it to the business development committee. That was why. Yeah, John. John, oh. I just double checked. John, you're not on the business development committee email list. Uh, neither neither oh. is Tom. Um, and so oh, you know, both of you, if you want to be added to that list, Henry. Actually, I think you're not on that list either. Uh, so if you want to be added on that list, um, ping me through private message in the chat with your email. Just remind me what your email is, and I'll I'll get you spun up on that on that mailing list. Okay, so I'm so going to disconnect Orca.